This is the XP Pen Artist 16 Pro. The folks over at XP Pen sent this to me to get my thoughts, so let's dive into it. So here it is. This is the 16 Pro. This is a 15.6 inch pen display that you can connect to either a Windows or a Mac computer. It acts as a monitor that you can draw on. It has a full HD display, 1920 by 1080 pixels, and it looks pretty good. It also comes with a new and improved pen. This thing's got 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. Now looking at this review, it might get a little bit confusing. XP Pen currently has two different drawing tablets of this size. This one is the Pro. So what makes it a Pro? What makes it worth that extra money? It's the screen. This might be the best screen I've seen on any non-Wacom tablet, at least as far as the color goes. Now I'm gonna be the first to admit I am not a super accurate color guy, but I could definitely tell the difference here. Usually with a tablet after I've used it for a little while I'm gonna notice that the greens are just a little too bright or there's just a touch too much intensity in one part of the color spectrum maybe the blacks bleed a little too much on the screen when you're scrolling that kind of thing that's not the case here the tablet also gives you the ability to fiddle with the settings a little bit there are some buttons along the side just like a normal monitor this might not seem like a big deal but a lot of the drawing tablets that I test out here don't have those kind of physical buttons along the side that let you adjust color since we are talking about color, the Pro sports a 92% Adobe RGB. I don't know if that's the right way to say it or not. 92% Adobe RGB Spectrum? I don't know. It's little sibling that I tested a couple weeks ago. On the other hand, the standard version of XP Pen's 16-inch tablet only has a 75% Adobe RGB Spectrum. I still feel like I'm saying that wrong. Anyway, the point is, if you need really good color, this one might be a good fit for you. Now, the one thing that I should point out when we're talking about a quality screen is compared to the Wacom tablets, there is a fair amount of distance in this tablet between where the glass is and where the screen is underneath it. What this leads to is something called parallax, where your pen tip is offset from where the cursor actually appears on the tablet screen. Now this is something you're going to find in any budget pen display like this one. So I'm not going to say it's any better or any worse than any other Wacom alternative out there on the market. And it's just a trade off you're making when you're saving the kind of money that you do when you buy something like this. The screen also comes with a matte coating on it. It feels really good to draw on. A little bit of a texture like this gives your pen some resistance so it doesn't feel quite as slidey as it does on like a smooth glass screen. Now the downside of the matte screen is that it's going to dull your colors a little bit. Again, another trade-off. I really like drawing on a matte screen protector, so it's a trade-off I am more than happy to make. I have also been told by several people in comments on other XP Pen tablets similar to this that you can remove that matte screen protector if you want to. The other thing that's worth pointing out is the eight customizable hotkeys along the side. I am a big fan of the hotkeys. Totally adjustable in the settings. You can set them to whatever you want. Another thing that you're going to get with this out of the box is this super steady stand. I've seen these stands a lot on a lot of different tablets. Very similar to this. You can adjust it to about any angle. Once it's set, it's not really going to go anywhere. It jitters a little bit, like if you press on the corners and things like that, but when you're resting your hand on it, I didn't feel it move around at all. One thing that is worth pointing out is that this stand is kind of bulky, and it is going to pull your tablet about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch, off your table. Some people aren't going to care for that extra space underneath the stand, so they're going to want to take it off. You can totally do that. You just unscrew it in the back, and you can get a third-party stand and set it in pretty much anything. There are three cables. You got your power cord, your USB cable, and your HDMI cable. Also comes with a a display adapter, so if you don't have an HDMI port, you can use that instead. Also worth pointing out, wires come out of the side, which is nice because they don't get in the way of the stand. Oh, hey, look, it's our friend the pen again. You know, the one with 8,000 levels of pressure. The one question I get a lot when I'm using a pen that has like this many levels of pressure is, wow, do you really notice it? My answer to that is, no, not really. I guess it's nice to have those extra levels of pressure sensitivity, but at a certain point, I don't really notice when I'm drawing all that extra levels of pressure. I compare it to megapixels on a camera. At a certain point, you just don't notice how much bigger your camera photos are. It's kind of how the pen feels. Nice to have, but not like a killer feature, at least for me. Now the pen itself looks a lot like the Wacom Pro Pen 2, and feels like it too. It's very comfortable to hold. It's got two customizable buttons along the side. They're nice and clickable. I don't find myself accidentally clicking the buttons along the side either, even though they stand out pretty far from the pen. The pen itself is battery powered. Now if you're thinking, oh no, I gotta buy a ton of batteries for this thing, don't worry, it's totally rechargeable, it even comes with its own USB recharging cable. 
Now there's no way to see how much charge is left in your pen, but previous XP pens that I've used for long extended periods of time can go days or even weeks between having to be charged. They last a really long time. My tablet came with two pens. This second little guy was a gift. He even has that little present icon on there to let you know. So what's it like to draw with this thing? I think it's pretty good. I draw a lot of ink lines and I found that my ink lines were pretty consistent. So if I'm drawing a bunch of hatch lines, I can draw them in consistent widths quickly. It's easy to hold pressure to consistent rate like when I'm doing my circle test it seemed to work really well that way and the pressure itself doesn't blow out or come on too strong anywhere along the pressure curve which you sometimes find in these third-party pens now when I first got the pen and started drawing with it I found that the calibration was way off both on the Mac and on the PC a quick dive into the settings fixed that right up for me calibration was good to go after I went through all the steps. Since I've been using XP Pen's other tablets for a while, this one felt really natural for me to just kind of jump into. I felt right at home. The one thing that did kind of surprise me was that the initial activation rate, how much pressure you have to apply to a pen before a line starts to appear, was really, really light. A lot of times, devices like this for light sketchers aren't the best in the world. This one's actually pretty good. If you're a light sketcher, don't shy away from it. Now, there were some wobble to my pen lines when I was doing my slow angled line test. What's interesting about XP Pen's stuff is that I tend to find wobble when I'm testing it, when I'm looking for it, but when I'm just casually drawing with it, I don't really notice it nearly as much. That was the same case here, which, which I guess is a good thing. So there's definitely wobble there. I wasn't really noticing it much though when I was drawing. Now the only place I really ran into a problem with the pen was when I was testing in Medibang on Windows. Medibang is one of my favorite programs to use just for testing out. It's free, it's, it's not the greatest program program in terms of like line consistency and stuff like that, which kind of makes it good for testing this sort of thing. If something works well in Medibang, I know it's probably going to work pretty well everywhere else too. But there was this one little quirk where the pen pressure didn't quite kick in the way you'd expect it to, especially right away, and so it en ended up leaving these like little glops at the end of all of my strokes. Now this is probably something that can be fixed if I fiddled around, maybe downloaded some different drivers, fiddled with settings, that sort of thing. Uh, and I should also point out, this is something I couldn't find in any of the other programs that I tested it. Checked it out in Photoshop, Clip Studio, Sketchable, Sketchbook Pro. All of those had really nice lines, uh, really worked pretty well. Sketchbook lines were a little bit shaky. I always get shaky lines in Sketchbook Pro. I don't know why. It's probably one of the reasons I'm not like a huge fan of that program, but it's pretty much what I expected across the board in every other program other than Medibang. So let's talk a little bit about some pros and cons here. Pros! You're gonna get really good color calibration in a fairly inexpensive tablet. You're also gonna get a good pen that feels good to draw with and works well for light sketchers. Cons are what you'd expect from a tablet like this, a little bit of a wobbly pen, a little bit of wobbly lines, and some parallax. And these are things I pretty much have come to expect from all non-Wacom drawing screens. And some of the other XP pen tablets similar to this, I have managed to scratch the matte coating that comes on them. Didn't happen this time because I was really careful with it, but I should point out that the matte screen that these come with tend to scratch. I should also point out that several people have said in the comments that the matte coating can be repealed and replaced. Oh, now it sounds like I'm talking about healthcare. I'm gonna restate that. The screen protector can be taken off and you can put a different screen protector on. I feel better now. I also did notice that as I got near the edges with the pen, I would often lose the cursor. I ended up pulling in my tools a little bit, like 10 pixels from the edge, so that didn't happen quite as much. So this is the Artist 16 Pro. I've added it to my list of alternatives that are worth a try up on my website. It's pretty high on that list. If you want to see it, I'm going to put a link below down in the description. I'm also going to stick a little card right here because you can click on that too. Now the links on that site go to Amazon. They are affiliate links, which means I get a little bit extra uh, when you buy something by clicking on one. Uh, so if you find my reviews helpful, that is a great way to support this channel and keep me reviewing stuff. Just visit that site, click on those links. It really helps me out. Another way to help out out is supporting me over on Patreon, and I would like to thank everybody who does that. I really appreciate it. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Anyway, that's all I got this week. Have a great one, guys. I will see you next time.